we are in a continent that though we have challenges, and there are many, we have challenges of climate change, we have challenges, serious challenges of uh, underdevelopment, but there is a positive side to where we are. And the positive side is that this is the continent of the future. And it is the continent of the future for four reasons, if, I, if you allow me to give you the four reasons. Number one, this is the youngest continent in the globe. Our mean age in the African continent is a mean age of between 19 and 21. Meaning that we have the most energetic, innovative, creative, talented workforce anywhere in the globe. Number two, this is the continent where a quarter of the world population will be staying by 2050. Forget about the small migration you see of people getting into the ocean and trying to get to Europe. That migration is going shortly to be in the opposite direction. Number three, this is the continent that has the highest resources of renewable energy. You know the centrality of energy in development. And because of climate change, the world is at a crossroads. Whether to continue with fossil fuel powered development or, or get to the renewable energy powered development. And we have no choice. The die is cast. We cannot continue with a fossil fuel powered energy world because it, is, it poses the biggest threat to humanity today. The reason why we have the adverse effects of climate change, whether you talk about uh, a warmer climate, cyclones, weather changes, droughts, and name it, heat waves. It is not sustainable. And today the conversation globally is how do we go green? Green renewable energy, Africa has close to 65% of the world potential of green energy, meaning that this is the continent that will drive green evolution into the future. And number three, this is also the continent that has the highest resources that will be used for green technology. Whether you talk about cobalt, and all the other minerals, 40, 50% of those minerals are in this continent. This continent is also going to be the continent, as I told you, with a quarter of the population of the world, meaning the largest market anywhere, largest and growing market anywhere in the world. And finally, this is the continent, number five, that has two-thirds, actually 65%, 65% of all arable, uncultivated land in the world, meaning that this will be the world's bread basket going into the future. Therefore, you guys, the future is laid out for you. That is the continent that we share. And I want to encourage you that the rest of us who have an opportunity to be leaders in this continent at this point in time, we are putting building blocks together to secure the position of this continent as the continent of the future. 
What happened 137 years ago in Berlin when they decided to subdivide this continent and share it amongst a few people? We are reversing that. That's why we have signed in record time the Africa Continental Free Trade Area that brings together all the 51 countries into a single market with a population of close to 1.2 billion at the moment and with a GDP of $3.4 trillion. Simply, it will be the biggest single market. My coming to Rwanda today is part of that effort of consolidating our African continent into one market so that we can become attractive and we can actually position ourselves for the opportunities of the future. You, you guys, you guys had better position your thinking, position your, uh, yourselves and think global, think continental. You are the people who will pick up from where, we, where, we, where the rest of us are living shortly so that you can, you can take the mantle and take this continent uh, into the future. I also want to tell you that we are driving another conversation, a conversation about how do we bring this huge potential in our continent from the minerals, from the agricultural potential, from the green energy resources, put packaging the, the market of Africa into one block. Our biggest challenge is resources. And that is why we are now pushing for a re-engineering of the international financial system. The current system built around World Bank, IMF, and all the other multilateral lenders, as is today, is rigged against the Global South. And that is why you will hear um, uh, initiatives that have been put in place. We are pushing a huge conversation. We are going to have a summit in Nairobi uh, of um, African heads of state in uh, September from the 4th to the 6th to discuss our position as a continent in relation to green financing. How do we make the international financial system green compliant, but much more importantly, fair to everybody? Today, most of us in this continent access finances from the in development finances for that matter, from the international financial uh, system at rates between seven, eight, nine, 10, maybe even 11, 12%. Others interest. Others access international development financing at 0.5%, maybe 0.2%, maybe in that region. If you are going to the same market, but because Africa has been classified as risky, you end up paying 12%. The other person is paying 0.5%. That system is not fair by any account. And we are asking, we're not asking for a system that favors us. We are demanding a system that is fair and gives everybody a chance. And that is not too much to ask. You know, recently, I came out of a campaign. <laughs> so unless I stop, I could, <laughs> I could go on. Because when you are campaigning, you don't know whether you have said enough to earn, yeah? to earn the vote. So, and since there is no voting here, I better stop. 
Thank you very much.